So quickly, if you think about how we're thinking about the cultural transformation, there's four different tracks we're taking. First of all, we have a series of strategy and alignment culture sessions with our leadership team. So really hearing first from the employees. We did a survey back in June and July of last year. We got a ton of feedback about what people want in the culture. It's focused totally on the culture. We got back to honest point, 10,000 comments, uh, about 25 pages, lots around leadership trust, uh, ability to really understand the strategy of the business, and a lot around, I love my team and my manager, but everybody next to me, I don't trust. So it's the silo mentality that we're trying to break here. So lots of great data. So we took that data and then we sat down with the leadership team and began to have them talk about the strategy of the business and how does it align to the culture we build. We did the culture gap analysis, and now we're in the process of taking all that work and rolling it into our strategic planning process. The interesting thing is we walked out and said, let's focus on three things we think we can really make a difference. Because you can't do all of those well, right? And so the opportunity is around customer focus, it's around market leadership, and it's around external focus or internal focus. How many of you often spend so much time looking internally that you miss what's happening outside the market? Exactly, and that's, that's been our challenge. So there's still internal things to work on, but you've got to understand your market, your customers, your competition more so than you've been able to do in the past because you've been so internally oriented. So all these things have big implications. Everything from who we hire, capabilities, systems you've got to put in place in terms of the automation, um, how you think about where you spend your time, um, how you market yourself. So these things done well will take us a while to get there. But those are how we're going to manage our strategies. So that's the big C. And this is the part, as HR practitioners, I think we sometimes miss. We get so caught up in the culture and the values, which are very critical, don't get me wrong. But if you only do those and you don't marry those towards where you're headed as a business, it's going to be a hollow exercise. And the other thing I would say is, we have a CEO who's brilliant, who can do engineering like nobody else can, and who can do sales like nobody else can. And a lot of that strategy is up here, and he gets frustrated when people can't articulate the strategy beneath them. And so this was also a Trojan horse, if you will, to not only talk about the values of the company, but also how do we articulate that strategy in a more simple and compelling way so employees know what I have to go work on. So marrying those two together has been extremely powerful, and I would encourage you bring those together and not to make it a pure uh, uh, values exercise. So we've gotten them together and we created a, a culture strategy map which talks about what differentiates our products, who are our customers, what counts in the market, what's our pricing model, all those things that help you therefore then pick your priorities and then you can begin to fashion a culture around that. So we're on our vision, mission, values, and strategy. So we're in the process of bringing now that team together with the final outputs and then we're working with all of the different work teams to then begin to talk about what is the strategy and the culture and how do we have them embedded into their engineering. So I guess my advice for you would be, first of all, um, it has to be both organic and leader-led. So initially my CEO had said, Amy, I want you to go out and do these, um, this survey here. All the employees let them create the values. And I said, well, I think we want to hear from them about what's most important. Why don't I make certain the leader at the top understand it and buy into it? The other thing we've done is also gone out and done a bunch of listening tours. Because one time you'll, you'll see data on paper and you'll see comments, but they aren't brought to life unless you go out. So I've done at least 30 roundtables in addition to my peers in Dublin and India and uh, Culver City and Drake, Utah and Singapore. And what's interesting to me is we sit down and do these culture roundtables. People are not just talking about the integrity they want to see in the leadership alignment, but they're also talking about really simple fixes to things around the systems and how what kind of tool are we using to manage our knowledge management? I mean, things are just like, and even people said they need to get a budget rolled down to them. Like some things, it's like, it's like care and feeding, it's like oxygen. So those are great ways to hear from employees about things that are easy fixes. It gives them confidence that our really serious about making the change. So it's been even more of an organizational effectiveness exercise for us beyond just the strategy and culture piece. Uh, to do it right, it takes time. So we kicked this off last, actually in March of last year, did the survey in June and July, did all the listening sessions, and we're going to continue to do them around home conversations now going forward and embedding them in our, our everyday uh, operating cycles, much like I talked about the cadence piece. And now we're going to have a leadership summit with our top 80 leaders to come in in uh, May to have them actually be a part of the strategy and going into the organization. And the interesting thing I would say there is initially it's like, well, I'll just, I'll just bring in all the L1s, which are direct reports to the CEO. 
and the L2s at their next level, but not everybody's praying equal because some groups need to be in there more so than others. So as opposed to a spray and pray and everybody comes in together and gets, gets baptized, it's being more of a working session with people that represent product, customer, marketing, support, uh, sales, to help really work through the strategy and how to make, make it real. So that's when these sessions become real as opposed to just having everyone come together and with a piece of paper, it's going to be real working sessions. And then therefore, it's going to be work. And I, I would say that for cultural changes, it has to be purposeful. If it's accidental, you won't, it will be easy because you don't have to really worry about it or you won't get the results. So it requires us to be very purposeful about how we measure and manage this, how we have a constant drumbeat and conversation, how we get leaders out to this. So um, for, for those who know about security, it's a hot, hot, hot skill, kind of like SOX was like you know, 12 years ago. Uh, and you don't curate it overnight. It's something you have to really grow uh, and learn and actually do. So we're doing a couple things. Is one, uh, we're looking at early career talent and bringing them in and having them do a kind of apprentice work so they begin to learn the craft of it. Uh, we've also funded um, a program called SC3, which is for people who are not going to have a traditional path to college that are disadvantaged and actually can have the soft security operating center analysts. So go in the community, not necessarily for semantic, but for our community. And the last thing I'd say is that we're so mission driven that we typically get sort of the, the battle with more deep capability folks because what we do is so important. Um, but everyone's competing for these folks. So we try and do everything from some of the work we've described up here in terms of the culture, the strategy, the alignment piece of it. And we try and get them to work on really cool things because people stick around for cool things and get attracted.